It's time for Declare Your Independence with Ernest Hancock. Believe me when I say we have a difficult time ahead of us. But if we are to be prepared for it, we must first shed our fear of it. I stand here without fear because I remember. I remember that I am here not because of the path that lies before me, but because of the path that lies behind me. I remember that for 100 years we have fought these machines. And after a century of war, I remember that which matters most. We are still here! We're not afraid here on Declare Your Independence with me, Ernest Hancock, here in Phoenix, Arizona. And coming to us from New Hampshire is Ethan Lee Vita. And he's, uh, you know, he has a lot to do with Pork Fest. I'm going to let him tell me every little, little thing that he does and how you can get in contact with him and if there are any spaces available, even. You know, Ethan, I got you there. Yep. I'm actually uh, with Carolyn and Bob Emery right now, not New Hampshire, but traveling back down south for now. Uh, there's actually quite a bit going on for Pork Fest. There's something for everybody. I mean, there's typically what it's known for, you know, the free libertine atmosphere of marijuana and alcohol, but there's also family-friendly activities. There's karaoke. There's games to be played. There's soapbox idol. There's egoism. You, you want it, you name it, you got it. Well, this is, you know, it's interesting that you're involved in uh, this. What's some of the other activities that we know you from? Uh, Liberty on Tour, uh, BlackVanguard.net. Uh, there's a little bit of everything. So you've been, my you know, involved. yeah, you've been hitchhiking around the country, have you not? Yep. You know that's you know so yeah, give you a kind of a uh, perspective on things. Well, let's go ahead and tell me about what's going on with Pork Fest this year. Uh, the response been pretty heavy. Yeah, it, we're hoping to hit over a thousand people this year. Uh, we've booked some pretty good speakers. Jane Neal Shulman, Stefan Molyneux is coming back for a second year. Robert Murphy, uh, Brian Aitken, and Evan Knappen. And then Roderick Long isn't quite confirmed yet, but we are pretty close to getting him as well. Well, who's that? Uh, Roderick Long is a philosopher with the whole Austrian school. Very cool, very cool. You know, one thing that I wanted to, I just wanted to share with people, I went last year with my wife and uh, some friends and my daughter, and we did the radio show live there, and we just had a, a good time and relaxed for a few days. And I'll tell you, um, I could see where this was going to go. At that time, I think they had like probably 700 or more camping spaces filled up, and people there that they created their own silver currency bartering community and they called it agora alley and now they have to turn it into agora valley tell me about that well i think we had about 28 people la uh, sites last year and this year we're going up to about 86 so we're trying to quadruple it if possible and, and got 34 left if anyone wants to uh, get one you would uh, join the pork fest Agros party group on facebook to sign up for that all right, cool. We got some guys going out there. The wallet voting thing, they're, they're going to have them some fun. And I think you may have met Drew and Nick. And uh, yep. so they're on their way out there. And the one thing that I, I wanted to kind of people to understand, if they were to bring their family, would they, you know, have entertainment for the kids? Are they in an environment that they, is family oriented? Uh, tell us about it. Uh, yeah, definitely. Kate Mueller is in charge of that. There's a tie-dye craft event. There's a Zombies vs. Humans event. Last year, uh, Justice Caroline, Mama Ali's daughter, won the Assassin's game, which is quite similar to the uh, Zombies vs. Humans game. There's some craft projects being uh, worked on. A little bit of everything for everybody. Ah, uh, we need a bonfire, man. You going to have a bonfire? I'm sure there's going to be a bonfire somewhere. You know, the, the one thing, how did Pork Fest get started? Which year are we in now? I believe this is seventh, maybe eighth year. I think it started o three, um, just as a small event for New Hampshire, and then it grew from there. O four, o five, probably o five was when it really started going, and it's been getting better every year. And you know, do we have a, a shift in who runs it each year? Or is it the same group of people? They kind of pass the torch. How's that work? 
Well, the FSP is in charge of it. Uh, from what I know, someone different has run Free State each Project. Year. Yes, Free State Project. Sovereign Curtis is uh, in charge of it this year. I believe Carla Gaelic was in charge of it last year. And unfortunately, I don't know who was in charge of it in past years, but it's generally been passed on from person to person. And what role are you playing in this thing? I'm mostly in charge of organizing and promoting Agora Valley. Well, go ahead and explain that for the audience. Well, for those who don't know what agorism is, it's basically combining the tactics of the counter economy or underground black market economy with libertarian ethics for promoting voluntary uh, human action inter interactions. Um, Agora Valley is mostly focused on the selling and buying of goods. Um, we've got a little bit of everything. We've got food, books, tarot card readings, physical therapy. There's silver currencies. George's famous baklava is going to be there this year again, or is a popular hit. Now, you know, look, there's a lot of kind of impromptu restaurants that popped up because everybody would be hungry, you know, and it was, it, and the weather was excellent. I mean, it was really nice. It was kind of warm on some days, and but it was always, you know, you're up near the Canadian border in uh, summer. Well, when's the dates of this thing? Uh, June 20 to 26, I believe it is. So you're getting uh, almost a whole week out of this thing. Yep. It was going about a week in the early days of Pork Fest. Then they changed it to a weekend, and this year we re elongated it to another week. Wow. You know, and, you know, a lot of the people uh, – tell us about the campground. I, I found that impressive also. Well, Rogers, they're very amenable to our ideas. I know last year when uh, police tried to walk through and patrol the area, the organizers asked the campground to ask the local police department to stay away, and they did. It was a simple request of don't advertise too much what you're doing on the outside, and ProQuest can be self-regulated. So at this point, it's really – a temporary stateless society that exists for a week. You know, that's one thing that I did notice. Um, a lot of people walked around armed. They had shooting days. You went out to a shooting range they had not too far away, and we went out and went shooting. And um, we went up there, and we, we took our firearms, and we were able to, you know, go to town. Well, of course, uh, a lot of people chose to wear their sidearms because you can in New Hampshire. As you're in the, the uh, camp— no permit. No permit. And what happened was, as you're in the campground, all of a sudden you start seeing local police start cruising the campground. And I'm like, what the heck? And uh, what they did get, though, in addition to please don't come in, was everybody's got a gun. <laughs> so you had to know that wasn't lost on them. They're like, you know what? Uh, either they're going to take care of themselves or we're in more trouble. We come, you know, we just soon not come back. So we're all good. You know, we don't need to be here. So that, that worked out too. And that gave you know, people a lot better uh, sense of they took care of themselves and there was more freedom to, you know, recreate and do whatever the heck they wanted anyway. So, Absolutely. and it's not just about carrying firearms. There's also firearm uh, educational gun safety classes, Etiquette, ammunition reloading, shooting range time, silencer demo is uh, perhaps being discussed. It's yet to be finalized. And then there's firearm law as well. You know, one of the other things that I found of interest there, there was a leather worker that made custom holsters. And if you went up there with your farm and go, you know what? Make me something customized and party. And he made it right there. So I wonder if he'll be back. You know, that, that was if, if I'd known he was going to be there, you know, I would have, um, you know, made sure I brought the firearms I wanted uh, leather for. You know what I mean? So. Yes, absolutely. There's so much to do at Pork Fest, though. You can easily lose track of everything. I myself didn't run into the holster guy, but I'm not surprised. It seems something very likely. There are all people that are looking out with uh, fruit leather that's going to be in Agora Valley, though. That's one of the recent developments. A what leather? Fruit leather. What's fruit leather? Fruit. F R U I T. Oh, fruit leather. Oh, fruit leather. Okay, I get it. You know, this is um, it's it's an enjoyable thing for kids too. And I saw a lot of families there and their children. And I tell you, what happened is you're able to just turn your kids loose, and they got acres and acres and acres of people you know are going to take care of them, and they're mm -hmm. running around with their dogs and having a good time, and, and people are tolerant. It's a community, and they believe community that looks out for each other. And they do. A little bit more about Pork Fest when we come back here on Declare Your Independence. You guys stay right there.